Hi guys, for these two chi-squared tests, let's make sure you know where the observed and the expected counts are within the context of the problem. So if you haven't taken the time to read this question yet, read the backstory, read the stem of the question, take a look at the data. I would read both parts of the question. Part B is review error types. So make sure you understand where the observed counts are and where the where the percentages are that we will use to find the expected counts. Pause and read it first before you go on. These are the observed counts right here. So we've taken a random sample of 250 invoices. So, and these were the counts, 61 of those invoices had a first digit of one, 50 had a first digit of two, and so forth. These are the values that you wanna enter into list one. So it doesn't matter whether you are using the calculator program or whether you are using the chi-squared goodness of fit command. You want to put the observed counts into list one. There they are. So the expected counts we need to put into list two. So I know that the sample size is 250. So the expected count, if the null hypothesis is true, the expected count of invoices that would have a first digit of 1 is 30.1% of 250. So literally what you can do, go to the first entry of list 2 and take your sample size and multiply it by the percentage that we expect if the null hypothesis is true. There's your expected count for 1s. For twos, Benford's law suggests that 17.6% of invoices will have a first digit of two, so take your 250 times 17.6. So you need to do this for all nine of the possible first digits. Then you will have your observed counts in list one, you'll have your expected counts in list two, and in order to complete the question then, you can either, under stats, you can go to test, and you can do the chi-squared GOF test. That stands for chi-squared goodness of fit test. So um, you might also, depending on the type of calculator you have, you could also use the chi-square program. So either way, you have to make sure your observed counts are in list one and the expected counts are in list two. So for the other question, that's question number 11. I would do that one and check your answers. That's an odd one. So the other question is number 18. So this time, these are the observed counts, the frequencies of these different types, 926, 288, 293, 104. Again, same thing. If you haven't taken the time to read this context, please pause the video, read the context, and then restart the video, and we'll talk about the way in order to find your expected counts. So very important. Um, the rest of the problem is at the top of the page. So there's the rest of the problem up there at the top of the page, but here's what you need to use in order to get your observed and expected count. So pause and read it, and then come back to it. So, we wish to investigate whether the following frequencies are consistent with genetic laws, which state that the phenotypes should occur in the ratio of 9 to 3 to 3 to 1. So notice, 9 plus 3 plus 3 plus 1, that adds up to 16 parts. So, the first phenotype here, tall cut, that frequency is 926. So these values, the 926, the 288, the 293, the 104, those should go in as your observed counts. Here we go. I will enter those in as my observed counts, the 926 the 288, the 293, and the 104. There are the observed counts. So now into list two, we need to get our expected counts. So for tall cut, the ratio is nine to three to three to one, but that's a total of nine plus three plus three plus one. That's a total of 16 parts. So nine out of 16 parts, that's the percentage that we are working with. Nine out of 16, that percentage is point 5625, that's what we want to multiply. That's what we want to multiply our total, if you will, sample size by in order to figure out how many would be the tall cut phenotype. So I suppose we do need to know the total. 
So the 926 plus the 288 plus the 293 plus the 104, that total comes out to be 1,611. So here's the way I would do it. Into my expected counts, I'm going to take the 1,611 and I'm going to multiply it by, don't multiply it by the 9 because that's 9 out of 16 parts. So the expected ratio that we would expect for this phenotype is 9 out of 16. You can multiply it by the 0.5625 if you want to write it down and remember that same thing. So there's our expected count. So for the next one, we have 3 out of 16. So if you wanted to, you can take the time to find that percentage. 3 out of 16 is 0.1875. So you can either use that, or frankly, I just prefer to use the data. So once again, we need our total of 1611. We're going to take our total of 1611 and multiply it by our expected ratio genetically, which that's 3 out of 16 parts. There's our expected count. So just like the other question, then you need to find your other expected counts for the last two phenotypes. Then once you have observed in list one and expected in list two, you're, rather, you're ready to either use the command or you can use the program in order to find your statistic and in order to find your p-value. Hope this was helpful.